Okay, here she comes. Swing and a miss. And right has it. I'm here with Kyle Wright, 21 game winner last year. Uh, obviously a great season for you individually, but over the past couple of years, you have made some mechanical adjustments that made you better and made you the pitcher that you are now. Throwing a sinker more, curveball more. Um, when you look at the mechanical adjustments you've made over the last couple of years to make you a better pitcher and more consistent, what are the things that you have done to do that? So I think for one, I kind of got back to really what I did in college. Um, I tried to, I looked, when I started to make a lot of changes, I went back and looked at old video, and that was kind of what I tried to get back closer to, um, which was for me, I use the word drift. A lot of times that's kind of a word you want to you know, stay away from, but I think it's all in context. Um, so for me, I like to feel myself drifting down the mound more. Um, whereas before I was getting stuck over the rubber and then trying to make up with either my glove flying open or something getting out of sequence. And so I think, I think the reason I started to stay back is because sometimes I do drift too far forward. Yeah. So it's kind of that fine line. And sometimes I do that now. I still get a little too drifty. Mm -hmm. So there's a fine line of getting your momentum going down the mound while still holding holding a strong back leg. Can you show me what you're talking about? Yeah, so and you're, and when, I, when I was struggling, I feel like I would lift, stay over the rubber, and then I would kind of go in this move here. Yeah. Um, and then I feel like I was stuck. And for me to get back on time, it was a fly open with the glove. Um, or if I did get there, I feel like my extension was bad. Stuff wasn't as good. I wasn't getting my curveball as, uh, as far. Um, really everything kind of struggled because of that. So now I almost want my first move to be, and for me, I, Jacob DeGrom's a guy I watched a lot to kind of find that move again as well. When I feel my legs going up, I want to feel myself going down this mound. So really, when I'm doing it right, I can't, I'm not going to be able to hold balance over the rubber when I'm drifting properly. Because I want to, we have the slope and sometimes we forget that it's a slope. So you can't really try to fl throw flat ground with the slope. So I started to use the slope better, get that drift. And as I get drifting, I try to hold this back leg for as long as possible till I get the foot strike. And then it's just time to unleash and go. Um, I started doing that. Strangely enough, my command got better. Um, I started throwing harder. My stuff was moving way better. Um, I even noticed when I was extent, I got like almost a foot of extension um, just from feeling that move getting down the mound better, which I mean, the closer you can get to the hitter, the harder it is to hit, right? So um, that was kind of the big thing for me. Um, then I think once I started to do that, it allowed my strengths to be my strengths again, which is my sinker, curveball, um, and you know, my change has been a big pitch for me lately too. And I know a couple years ago, Josh Tomlin mentioned moving on the first base side of the rubber. Can you explain to us what that did for you and why that helped the sinker so much? My sinker moves, it runs pretty well. Where were you to begin with? Before, I was about right in the middle. I got a big foot, so it's, uh, when I'm in the middle, really, I thought I was on this side the whole time, but my foot's so big, my toe's actually over the middle. So for me, if I throw a sinker right down the middle, it's really kind of more middle in, and then it's in off the plate. Up and in with a sinker, that's a strike. So for me, it was just as simple as, I mean, feel like I got half my foot on the rubber. So now I can take that same exact slot that I was throwing right here, and now it's a strike down and in. Um, and then if, if I'm here, if I pull it, now I have that chance of it coming more back and catching air. the back door. Um, so it just it just gives you a lot more room, a lot more plate to play with. Yeah. Um, I feel like I'm giving myself the whole, whole plate to throw to now as opposed to really honestly half. Um, and you know, I, I thought that was gonna hurt me with my curveball, but really same thing. Um, I feel like I was able to throw my curveball more almost arm side and still get that same break. Yeah. Um, so it's kind of a different look to a hitter too. So speaking about the curveball, speaking of the curveball, uh, increased it as far as usage is concerned, the velocity's increased on it too. Can you show us the grip and what your thought process is when you rip through it? Yeah, yeah so I, I, it's the same grip I've always had. I go um, into the horseshoe here and I just go with the simple spike. Um, and for me, this was kind of my pitch growing up. Like high school, this is what I threw. College, this is what I threw. Um, and then I get to pro ball, I started out using it and then as analytics kind of came in, um, you know, kind of the hard slider yeah. uh, was kind of the pitch, you know, that was kind of taken over a little bit. So. I got away from my curveball and I lost a little bit. And then I think it was in 2020, it, that was when I was like, I was struggling pretty bad. It's time to start bringing that back. Um, then 2021 is when I really said, okay, we got to dive into what I do well. And so for me, 2021 was just up the usage. That was a big thing there. 
And then last year, um, it was almost up the usage even more. And now, curveballs that are typically, this is not always the trick, not always the case as Max Fried, he's yeah. different than this, but curveballs, the harder they are, they tend to perform better. So for me, my goal is just grab it and let it rip. Um, and so if I get, you know, that 84 to 86 range, then that's like perfect where I want to be. Um, and again, that's not true for everyone, but for yeah. me, the way mine plays, that's kind of, when I throw it harder, it's usually the better it is. And a call, strike three, on the inside corner with a changeup. Have you changed anything with the changeup over the last couple of years? I used to use a four seam changeup because I, um, I used to was throwing more four seams and when I started switching it back to my two seam, my strength, then I switched the two seam change up. And I noticed I kind of found pretty much immediate better results. Like the movement was way better. I was actually getting more of a sink and dropping action as opposed to just kind of, uh, it's just almost like when I was throwing a four seam, just kind of like a lazier. Yeah. Um, so this one, and I feel like I've commanded it way better too. What, what does that grip look like for you? Uh, so I, if I go on the, the seams here, I just, these two here, and then sometimes kind of depending on how it feels, sometimes this is a big feel pitch for me. I'll you know take the uh, pointer finger higher, lower it. Um, sometimes I'll put the thumb underneath a little bit, try to get a little more sync. So it's a pitch that I still kind of will play with the grip from game to game and whatever feels comfortable, but um, that's kind of usually kind of the stock grip there. Obviously last year was a great year, but one thing that you want to work on to make you even better this year, what would that be? Uh, I think the changeup. You know, I started to find it in 2021 um, in the World Series, really. And then 2022, it was pretty good from the start. And then down the stretch, it became a huge pitch for me um, just because I think hitters were starting to be more cognizant of, of the curveball in general. So I think for me, I want to continue to use that changeup. Um, it performed really well um, when it was in the strike zone. So ideally, you know, I want it to, that to be a pitch I can use in any count, just like I would throw my fastball or my curveball. If I can put one more pitch into a hitter's head that they have to defend, End, um, I think it's only going to make hitting harder. Great stuff. One thing before we let you go, give me one tip for kids watching this. What would be that tip that you would say, okay, this is what you need to work on as a kid? You know, and I think it's such a cliche, uh, but it's those strikes because the reason I say that is because I struggled a lot at the big league level because I wasn't throwing strikes. Um, and a lot of that is because, you know, you don't want to be, you know, careless and just throw it up there because then they'll hit it. But I've learned that the more you throw balls and you get behind accounts, that's when you really get hurt. So, um, you know, I had the most success I ever did last year, and that's because I was attacking the strike zone with all my pitches. So um, I think that's, that's really the biggest thing. The more that you can get ahead of hitters, the harder it is to hit. Um, the more behind you are, the tougher or the easier it is to hit. So, again, it's a cliche, but I know for me that's that's what I struggle with the most, and that's why I feel like I uh, you know failed as much as I did. Um, so as soon as I got back to attacking the strike zone, I had a lot more success. Well, thanks for your time. We appreciate Absolutely. it. Best of luck. Thank you. Appreciate it.